Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aegean and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Another homicide on St. Croix, a shooting victim on St. Thomas dies, and the fifth revival of Quadrille in schools is coming up. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. In our top story tonight, it is as if the Virgin Islands is under siege. It's been a violent week for the record books. In just five days since February 14th, five people have been shot and killed. And now we have another murder on St. Croix, this time in Frederickstead. News Channel 8's Wes Small has more. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Sadly, we have another homicide in our territory. We are directly across the street from Kmart, the old Sunshine Mall, here at uh, Prosperity, uh, Mini Mart here. And uh, what we have, last night around 8.30, we have a young man in his 30s. Word on the street is he could have been coerced by someone to go in the back for some reason, back at the gas station. You're going to see some foul footage momentarily. News Channel 8 was there exclusively. Then word on the street, around eight or nine shots hit this guy. Now you're looking at the scene now. Right now we need to take it to Police Chief Oakland Benta with more on the 12th, that's right, a dozen homicides were only in the second month of the year. On Thursday, February 18, 2010, at about 8.23 in the evening, calls came into 911 in reference to shots being fired in the area of the Prosperity Service Station, just across from Kmart, Frederickstead. When the officers arrived on the scene, they observed a male individual laying in the pool of blood behind the service station. The officers immediately called for paramedic assistance. The ambulance arrived on the scene momentarily, however, no vital signs were detected. One Orlando Clark, a 20-year-old male of a state Williams light, was shot multiple times about the body. The investigators are presently out in the field conducting the investigation as of last night. And I would like to say to a lot of the young men, when you take a life, that life for that person has a family. Those families are left to mourn. However, when you are arrested, you leave your family behind to suffer just the same. In feuds, we tend to revert to passion and revert to the most heinous part of it, and subsequently, we ask for forgiveness after you've done your deed. Remember, it is not just you and you alone. It is also your family who plays a role in your suffering. It is also your family who is left to bear part of the hurt, even though they did not pull the trigger. I'm pleading to all of you out there that if you have a situation that you need to address where something may have been done to you, that there are other means and methods that you can apply rather than reverting to a gun by taking the life of another individual. Crime does not pay. It comes back and knocks on your door. Be mindful that your family also suffer. And if that's the course that you want to take for your family, then it leaves the police department with no other avenue but to place you behind bars. That's all we have. Around 8.23 last night, a black man in his 30s, word on the street, possibly he was coerced by some of his so-called friends or what have you, acquaintances in the back. Then nine shots rang out, leaving him dead on the scene. The 12th homicide in our territory, it's hard to keep count. We've had four homicides in just the last few days. The Virgin Islands, once again, under siege. Watch yourselves out there. If you know anything about these murders, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes Small. And in other news, a man who was shot in the leg recently has died from his gunshot wounds. 43-year-old Delano Dow, who was wounded by gunfire around 4 a.m. on Wednesday, has now died from those injuries. Dow drove himself to the downtown fire station to seek help and was taken to the hospital where he later died. Now, even though it's hard to keep count, we believe the murder rate is now at 12, with six murders on St. Croix and six on St. Thomas. And the governor recently visited the co-op for farmers. And we're going to take a look at that now. This particular farmer, no, she'll be doing sweet potatoes. We are trying to get a particular variety out of Antigua, mm -hmm. but... Uh, is going to be posing a problem as in reference to the transportation of it because it will not pass custom. So we may have to go get it out of Puerto Rico. Over there, we have another farmer who's actually doing okras. 
and he's specifically that particular farmer. He's specialized basically in in, uh, in bell peppers. Okay. This is a watermelon field, well manicured. There's hardly any grasses here. I'm sure you can get a watermelon out today that's about 15, 16 pounds maybe. What you see there among the, the that's beans. Okay. But she's attending there, the Swiss chard. You may want to walk down so you can see more. Um, this farmer have just reaped a significant amount of cucumbers. He's on his second batch and he's harvesting right now. He has also just, on the opposite side, he has um, some cantaloupes, which he has planted. Uh, this field right here is actually tomatoes, mm -hmm. and they're all steak. And there's another farm on the other end with um, tomatoes just as well. It's an extremely impressive operation. Um, I have to tell you that the, the combination of what Mr. Brown is doing along with the commissioner and the, and the whole cooperative, I think, really begins to lend weight to the fact that Farming can be a business at the same time, something that the farmers enjoy, but that you can migrate it towards a business. And that if you make the investment and stay committed to the investment, not just do it, but not but if you stay committed to the investment as the commission is beginning to do, I think it has a tremendous potential. And I think the, um, the fact that it's on this property and that we're able to do a partnership with a cooperative to make sure that this land stays farming land, I think is, um, it speaks well both of the cooperative, which um, I think has really taken the taken the farming issue to another level, both but in terms of the business plan, the management that's going on, the relationships that they've fostered with SBDC, with the farmers, but also with EDA working with the Department of Agriculture and, and the university, well, definitely the university with the research, I think really begins to show that that this can be more than just a hobby. It can actually be something that, that over a period of time that restaurants, the stores, the schools, and everything can feel very comfortable that they're getting a very quality product, as they are now. We just need more people to understand what, what's being produced here at this time. So I think this is a tremendous program and a project that's being undertaken. And, and the mere fact that you see the full scale working here, even now you see a, a little baby working in the fields, tells you it's, <laughs> it is the future. There's no doubt, there's no doubt about it. We have here watermelon, yellow zucchini, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and some lovely nah. cherry tomatoes and pear tomatoes. This is the one we taste down in the field. This that's, is what we tasted. Oh, yeah, down. No, no, this is what I tasted. <laughs> oh, that's right, you did too. <laughs> and, you, and you know this? Yes. It is at the right, the right, right size. The right right size. Right Make sure you know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. There you go. Okay, hold it. Well, this out. This I'll take with you. Hold on, let me get the right foot and then the other one. Okay? Really? Is it sweeter? Should be sweeter. Should be sweeter. Should be Should you get you want one? Oh, sure, man. I take one back for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, All right take care. And good luck to all those prospective farmers. And when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at Quadrille Dance. Stay with us. <laughs> 